Hi there, Spark fans. Rob Reynolds here. While debate has raged for decades as to whether or not people are getting smarter, I think that we can say unequivocally that phones, homes, even entire cities are most certainly getting smarter. Major cities from Calgary to Ljubljana are digitalizing, allowing them to more easily and efficiently monitor gas and water usage, smoke and fire detection, water and flood detection, and even manage traffic flow. And they're doing this using LoRa and LoRaWAN, long-range non-cellular wireless communications protocols. And you can use these things too, along with Bluetooth 5 BLE, all on a single board. What board, you might ask? Why, the new SparkFun LoRa ThingPlus Explorable, of course. The Explorable is a feather footprint board with a 3.3 volt operating voltage, which can be supplied through pins, the JST connector with a LiPo battery, or regulated down from 5 volts through the USB-C connector. There's an onboard battery charging circuit with a 500 milliamp charge rate, and a U.FL antenna connector for BLE and RF. It's got 24 GPIO pins, a quick connector for I2C devices, and is compatible with the Things Network LoRaWAN. And all of this is run by a powerhouse NM180100 system and package from Northern Mechatronics. It runs LoRa from 863 to 870 megahertz in Europe, and 902 to 928 megahertz in the US. It has a maximum transmit power of plus 22 dBm, and a receiver sensitivity of minus 147.6 dBm. For Bluetooth 5 Low Energy, or BLE, it spans from 2.402 to 2.480 GHz, with a maximum transmit power of plus 2 dBm, and receiver sensitivity of minus 95 dBm. Its architecture is an Ambic Apollo 3 ARM Cortex-M4 with FPU up to 96 MHz, with 1 MB of on-chip flash with external flash support, and 384 kilobytes of RAM. And it can be programmed with the Arduino IDE through the SparkFun Apollo 3 Arduino Core. And for security, it offers ISO 7816 secure interface, security key storage, security boot, security OTA, and external flash inline encryption and decryption. LoRa is the perfect protocol for makers and engineers who want to create a smart home, a smart yard, or if you happen to live among a whole lot of like-minded friends, even an entire smart neighborhood. Why? Well, I can think of like half a dozen reasons just off the top of my head. LoRa offers ultra-low energy consumption, exceptional range, cost efficiency, bi-directional communication, localization without GPS, and even with all that, it's still open source. So let's give this a spin. Now, I could probably demonstrate the Bluetooth, but for my money on this module, the Bluetooth is kind of secondary to the LoRa. I'd probably use the Bluetooth to take LoRa information that the board receives and just send it to my phone to read it off the screen as long as I were close to the base unit. So instead, let's test out the LoRa. What do you say? We'll go outside and do a little distance test. Come on, it'll be fun. I've got two explorable modules. One will stay here at the house and the other will come with me. I've written a short, really simple sketch, and that's not even really true. Pete, one of our resident geniuses, wrote a short and simple sketch. I just tweaked it and added a couple lines to make it do what I needed. So what will happen? On this module that I have with me, the onboard LED will illuminate, and then it will send a short hello world message. It will bounce off of the receiver here at the house and come back to the one in my hand. When that happens, the LED will turn off. So that's going to happen once a second. Uh, send, bounce, receive, turn off. Turn on, send, bounce, receive, turn off. So, when I get out of range, what's going to happen is this will transmit, but it will not receive the message coming back. That means the LED will not turn off. So once I get to a point where the blue LED stays on, I know I'm out of range. So, let's take a walk through my neighborhood and down the street and see how far we can go. Here's my little neighborhood. There's an angry dog. Hey, puppy. So the onboard LED, whoa, sorry about the wind. The onboard LED is really the simplest way for me to get visual feedback as to what's going on with this unit. Of course, since the Apollo 3 on board has Bluetooth, I could have linked it to my phone and received the information that way. And then not only could I receive just the fact that it's connected, but also information like signal strength, signal to noise ratio, stuff like that. Uh, additionally, since there is a quick connector here on board, I could have added a quick OLED or a quick uh, serial LCD and gotten the information that way. 
still blinking, that's good. Of course, the idea behind the onboard quick connector is to add sensors, like any good LoRa or LoRaWAN network. You've got a whole bunch of LoRa modules with sensors all around your home or building or community or town or whatever, and they send information back to LoRa gateways, sends that information back to network servers. Okay, so it looks like we've reached the end of our range here. We've got a solid blue LED on the board. Uh, it was intermittent for probably the past 10, 15, 15 or 20 meters. I'm gonna call this range right here. So we'll head back inside. I'll take a measurement on the map, see how far it is. I'll do a nice little end of video wrap up like I like to do, and we'll call it good, all right? Uh, no sense in you walking back with me, so I'll see you in the studio. Bye. So, I got back and I plotted my distance on a map, and it turns out I lost signal at about 335 meters, or around 1,100 feet. Not bad. I mean, certainly when you compare it to Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. But honestly, I expected more than that. And I knew I could get more by making a few adjustments. So I tried one adjustment. I took the bandwidth from 250 down to 125, and then I went back out. Now, I didn't film that because it was very cold and very windy and very dark. In fact, it was so cold I took the car. But just by making that one simple adjustment, I was able to get the range up to 615 meters or just a bit over 2,000 feet just by that one simple adjustment. So certainly long ranges are possible with this. Now, of course, that did slow down the transmission time. But for most LoRa projects, you won't be streaming information. You'll probably be sending small packets at regular intervals. So if it goes from 150 milliseconds to a full second, shouldn't be a problem. So if you want to start working with long range communication or IoT projects with a built in side order of Bluetooth, then you definitely want to get your hands on one or perhaps several of the new SparkFun LoRa Thing Plus Explorables. Pick up yours over at sparkfun.com and please stay safe, be kind, and happy hacking. for decades as to whether or not people are getting smarter. Ah, Bluetooth 5 Billy, so close. Almost there, almost there. We're certainly getting smarter. A major sittery, sitteries. Apparently I'm getting dumber. This is it, this'll be the one. Hi there, Spark fans, Rob Reynolds here. <clears throat> nope.